Hello everyone, my name is Malad Parpucci. I'm in the Faculty of Health Sciences PhD program, and the title of my presentation is Housing First. What largely determines our health and social well-being? See, over the past 40 years, the focus has largely been on individual choices that people make, like the number of fruits and vegetables you eat daily. But researchers have increasingly been saying, well, hold on a second. What about the environments in which we live our day-to-day -day lives? Could the environment be largely determining our health and social well-being? And the answer is yes. And by the environment, I mean the physical environment, the social environment, the political environment, the economic environment, the policy environment largely structured by public policies outside of our immediate control. Now, I'd like to bring your attention to homelessness, which can cut life expectancy in half. See, since the 1980s, there have been continual cuts to affordable housing. And around the same time, large numbers of people living with mental illness were redirected from psychiatric hospitals into the community with inadequate supports. We then see a rise in mental illness among the homeless population. Coincidence? Even where services were implemented, they simply haven't worked. And so people end up back on the streets stuck. Now, Dr. Sam Sambaris, a clinical psychologist in New York City, he took a look at this system and he created an intervention that flips it on its head. He called it Housing First. Housing First involves immediate access to an apartment in the private market with rent subsidized to ensure affordability and combining this with a separate health and social service team available in the community 24 seven. Now, unlike other housing programs, housing first treats housing as a human right by not making it contingent on sobriety or treatment engagement. And client choice is central where people are asked, where would you like to live and what services will best support your recovery? Now, our research aim was to determine whether such an intervention could work in Canada by examining whether Housing First increases the time spent in stable housing. So we conducted an experiment in Vancouver where 497 homeless adults living with mental illness either received Housing First or could access existing community services. Now, what we found was that on average, Participants accessing existing services spent about 25% of the time in stable housing versus 75% of the time for those in housing first. Folks, we can drastically reduce long-term homelessness using housing first. It's time to implement public policies that respect the dignity and human rights of people living with mental illness. Thank you.